Welcome to the GPN Technologies Best Year Ever Year End Review and Planning for 2019 webinar series. My name is Nicole Pine and I am your moderator. We are excited you could join us to get ready for record breaking success in 2019. Today is part two improve your staff's performance and effectiveness. We will learn how to use Edge Pro to understand staff KPIs understand the importance of the handoff and staff training. I have added a few housekeeping items to the chat window, which is where you will find helpful information throughout the webinar. We will be asking a few polling questions to assist in our discussion. Kathy Furman will be leading our call as our Edge Pro expert. Kathy is the assistant manager in our customer care department at GPN Technologies and is ABO certified in a CPOT. She is very active with the AOA and involved with their continuing education for ophthalmic technicians. We are also joined today by our industry expert guest speaker, Michael De La Pesca. Mike is an ABO master optician. He founded his business, Quantum Optical, in 1997, which has grown into one of the largest providers of CE and training for ophthalmic professionals. Mike also created Quantum's Pinnacle program which is a comprehensive, hands-on, customizable training program that helps optical professionals and practices perform more efficiently and successfully. He will be speaking on how training and cross-training can change a practice dynamic. And now, I'll hand it over to Kathy to begin the webinar. Hey, Nicole. So excited to have everyone join us today. So just to kind of recap a little bit what Nicole said, what we will be doing today is we will be looking at how to use Edge Pro to evaluate your team's performance this year in 2018 so you know who needs training in order to increase revenue in 2019. We are also going to discuss some ways to train our staff to help us meet goals. So that way in 2019, you can knock it out of the park. So before we get started, I'd like to get some input from our guest speaker. So Mike, if you had two or three areas in the practice to focus on to improve team performance, what would they be? I would say probably multiple pairs and premium enhancements like um, uh, uh, premium AR, high index lenses, photochromics, things of that nature. Okay, great. So Nicole, um, like Nicole said, we will be doing some polling questions. So let's go ahead and throw up our first polling question. So our first polling question would be, what do you think the AR percentages for the top 10% of practices nationally? So while we give our attendees a few minutes to vote, Mike, what in your opinion in the optical is the most important things to track and why? Well, I would, uh, like I said, I think multiple pairs is uh, tracking, uh, anti-reflective tracking is absolutely in there, uh, progressives versus regular bifocals, and uh, photochromics versus, uh, you know, clear lenses. So I think any enhancement over and above a, a clear plastic lens is probably something you want to keep an eye on. Okay, great. So, Nicole, do we have results from our poll? We do. So it actually looks like we have two that are equal. Um, so from our attendees, they decided that it was either 73% or 87%, and those were tied. Wow, that is awesome. So um, just to let you know, so to be in the top 10% nationally, you actually would have to meet 87% AR in your practice to reach that goal. Um, so just kind of a little tidbit for you. So what we're going to do first, what I'd like to do is show you a worksheet before we get started on a few metrics that we recommend you track in the practice. This is our staff KPI review worksheet. As you see, there are quite a few metrics here that you can track. We, and you can find all this information in many Edge Pro dashboards. So what we do recommend is when you do this, that you work with your team members one-on-one -on -one to look at their numbers for this year in 2018, but then help them set goals for 2019. 
we are going to be releasing this out to you guys after the webinar. And if for some reason you did not get the last worksheets from our last session, please let us know that as, as well so we can send those out. So not only do we recommend that you work one-on-one -on -one with your team members on these KPIs, but we also recommend when you are working on them in the practice and set, um, you do one at a time. This makes sure that you don't overwhelm your staff and your team. So let's go take a look where we can find some of these KPIs in Edge Pro. So what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at our home screen and we're gonna to go to our staff compare matrix. This is a dashboard that I used a lot when I managed the practice that I worked in. And just for our Excel users, you can actually take these matrices and copy and paste them into an Excel worksheet. So let's go look at our staff compare matrix and see what's going on. So what we can see for this practice is we can see our total average and percentage of some key metrics. And we can see how each individual person is doing in these metrics on our sales floor. This is important to know because you wanna know exactly where each of these team members, how they stack up against the practice average. So let's focus on just a few of these right now. So if you join us for last ses session, you remember that we talked about patient owned frames. So with patient owned frames, we know that this is an area in the practice where money is being left on the table. So it is important to focus on trying to reduce this percentage. If you remember from our last session, we did recommend that this percentage be 15% or less for the practice. And as you can see in this practice, all our salespeople are above that percentage. So this would be a great goal for the practice to work on next year. Now, a couple of the metrics that Mike hit on about total AR and our transitions photochromatic percentages are also great ones to work on in the practice. So we, when we look at the practice average, we wanna also look at how each team member is doing. So you can focus on how they are performing on the optical sales floor. As you can see, Sarah here has a very high percentage based on above the total percentage amount. So she is our rock star in this practice. And we have Hugh and Julian who, of course, a little bit behind Sarah, but definitely Hugh is way down in, in the percentages. Now, the other thing that is important to understand, not only is the percentage important to understand, it's also important to know the volume that is happening in the practice and what each individual is selling. So we have a great feature that you can actually turn on units here and you can actually see how many units an individual team member is selling in the practice. So what you can see here is Hugh has quite a bit decreased volume than her coworkers. This is important to know, especially if the people that you were looking at are your key salespeople. So this should be the same across the board. So not only is Hugh having a, has a low unit number, but Hugh also has a low AR and transition number. So Mike, can you give some little insight into, if, um, in a practice if you saw um, two, team members that had one had a lower unit number and a lower AR transition number, what might be happening in the practice? Uh, by looking at that, my, my guess would be that uh, Sarah has more uh, comfort level with talking about different uh, options and add-ons and things like that for the, for the ARs. She's got a, more com more, um, a better comfort level when it comes to speaking with the patients, and that translates into higher sales. She just sounds like she's a little bit more educated when it comes to the different types of ARs that are out there. And I think that's impacting uh, her sales in a positive way. And Mike, do you think that would also cause, if you didn't have training necessarily, that that would cause her to have uh, less volume in the practice compared to her coworkers? Absolutely, uh, because what will happen is they'll become a little bit more apprehensive and they won't understand all the options. They won't be able to answer, uh, and not all the time, but when uh, somebody's more educated there, have the answers kind of on the tip of their tongue versus not having them so they don't delve into those conversations as much. 
and that's when you see the the uh, percentages drop off a little bit. Okay, great. So Nicole, let's go ahead and get another quick poll from our attendees. All right, so on this poll, we'd like to kind of get an idea of if, when do you discuss lens features and enhancements in the exam room? And as you probably have heard prior to the session today, it, we, it is recommended to prescribe from the exam chair or recommend from the exam chair so you can translate those cells into the optical cells floor. All right, Kathy, so we, we have about 74% of the results in. I'd love to see a couple more come in because we're almost tied again with some of these answers. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, so it actually looks like about 51% of the results are always, that they always discuss the lens features and enhancements in the exam room, and then the other 49% are sometimes. All right, great. I love to hear the fact that you guys are doing that in the exam room. So what I'd like to show you is how some of that work that you're doing and how that can translate into an Edge Pro. So what we can do is not stay on our same matrix and you can actually filter by your doctors and your practitioners in your office. So you can actually look at each individual practitioner and then you will see how their handoff will kind of impact the sales for your team members. So what we'll do is we will focus on today just Dr. Glover and how he, he is affecting his team members. So this is a great way to see how the relationship corresponds between the doctor, our optical team members, but also that handoff that is happening in the practice. So what, we, what we'll do first is we will look at the um, AR and transition percentages like we did before. As you can see, the total percentage is the same for the Dr. Glover as it was for the whole practice. As kind of Mike referred to, Sarah apparently has some very good training because her number stayed pretty consistent as well, even though it's a different doctor. But the one thing that we're noticing is we're noticing that Hugh and Julian, when working with Dr. Glover, their percentages go down some. And there can be various reasons and you know your own practice. So if you see something like this, you might need to discuss a little bit with the practice what's happening. So what I'd like to know though, Mike, is what would you recommend as a optical handoff? Like what are the advantages of that? And if you have team members who maybe are not following through where it doesn't look like you and Julian are following through with those recommendations, what can be done to make sure that the team does that? Well, the, the handoff is probably the most critical part of the uh, entire experience. That transfers the authority from the doctor to the optician. And the patients will look at the, uh, the doctor as if, you know, anything that happens in the exam room is part of the exam. Anything that happens in the, in the dispensary is part of the sales uh, process. So there's a little bit more weight carried in the doctor's office. And I saw the percentages there. You know, uh, every uh, about half the uh, attendees do uh, recommend. Forty-nine percent of them do sometimes, but prescribing from the chair, not just not just recommending, but prescribing from the chair carries a lot more weight. And that's when somebody will come in and say, uh, when a doctor says to a patient, "You need," or "I I I uh, I would prescribe a second pair, or a polarized sunglass, or some or AR coating, whatever whatever it is." that's gonna carry a lot of weight. It's almost as if at that point, the optician cannot talk the patient out of it. Just like if you got something from a doctor for a, an ailment and went to a pharmacist, you'd be hard pressed to talk that pharmacist out of uh, into something else. So it works the same way. And that transfer of authority is a one of those things that is a perfect opportunity to, to uh, discuss any of those things that happened in the exam room and some of the flows in the practices may not allow the doctor to come out to the dispensary. So you can come up with a couple of different ways to make that happen, whether the doctor can come out in the dispensary and all three of you are together, or the uh, doctor can call the optician into the uh, exam room prior to closing out the exam and discussing it in the exam room and then 
the patient and the optician go to the dispensary. But it's it's got to be personal. A handwritten note on the side of a chart or on the bottom of an RX form, it does work, but it doesn't carry as much weight as that personal transfer. Absolutely. It's, it's one of the best things you can do in the practice. Great, Mike. So just like Mike said, you definitely want to kind of examine what's happening in the practice. So say, for instance, Dr. Glover, in this situation, when he talks to Sarah, he actually talks to Sarah one-on-one -on -one in front of the patient on what his recommendations are. But then for Julian and Hugh, it could just be, like Mike said, kind of on a sticky note on the side of the chart. And as we know, sticky notes can get lost in the practice. Or they could not see that sticky note on what the doctor recommends. And so basically they are not doing as good as sales as Sarah is doing. So now that we have taken a look at um, a few key metrics for your staff and then how your staff is correlating with how your doctors are working, let's take a look at how our providers are doing in the practice. So you can also find this under our enhanced edge marks. And we do have quite a few reports to see how our providers are doing. But the one report I do want to highlight with you today is our edge marks matrix. So when we go into our edge marks matrix, and we filter by doctor, we can see our primary doctors that are happening in the practice. We have the same thing of the total average of the practice in our gray area and then each individual practitioner. What we wanna look at is we wanna look at the total number of exams they're doing, the total frames they've sold, sold in the practice, as well the total number of lenses. The reason we wanna focus on these three numbers because this will help us calculate a very important and critical metric in all practices. And that, of course, those metrics are your, uh, some of your capture rates that are happening. So what we do is we take these numbers and we can show you three capture rates that are happening in the practice. We can show you frame per exam, lenses per exam, and complete eyewear for exam. So this is very important to understand and know so you know how well your patient retention is and how often they're buying glasses in your practice. So let's take a look at our three practitioners here. As you can see, Dr. Williams has the higher percentage of both, of all three capture rates in this practice of the frame per exam, lens per exam, and eyewear per exam. But he only sees about half of the people that Dr. Schneider sees. So Something's going on with Dr. Williams that he's doing a great job of making sure his patients are getting out in the exam room and getting out of the exam room and on the optical floor in a timely fashion to be able to do to look at glasses. And then, of course, with Dr. Glover and Dr. Schneider, those are a little bit below um, where they probably need to be in the practice. And as you remember, when we were looking before at Dr. Glover's information with the key optical team members you can kind of see here where his numbers are low as well out of all three providers. And that definitely correlates and makes sense on how the doctor and opticians are working together because his capture rate is of course lower than the rest of his colleagues. So the other thing that's great about this is not only can you look at each practitioner, but you can also get an idea of how the staff is working as a team as a whole. Because as we know, is if your staff is working as a team, that that will increase number of frames and lenses sold in the practice. That would also increase your average frame sale and your average lens sale, as well as your capture rate. So not only is it important to know how your staff is doing, where, and you can see those numbers, but you can also see how they're working together as a unit and as a team in regards to the whole practice and each individual provider's numbers. So Nicole, let's go ahead and put up our last polling question for the day. So what we'd like to know is how often do you offer training for your team? And while we wait for some results, um, Mike, what are some of the advantages of staff training in the practice? Uh, there are many advantages to staff training in the practice. Uh, it starts at the doctor and works its way right down to uh, the rest of the staff understanding um, the new technology that comes out. We're a technological field, so anything that comes out 
Uh, everybody in the practice should be well aware of the new products and new technologies that are available. Um, other advantages are it increases the comfort level for everybody. They're all on the same page. They're all selling the same products. They're all um, you know, delivering the same messages. The other thing is to believe in the products, and the best way to do that is to wear them yourself. If you don't have AR or you're not, you know, you're not uh, selling protochromics, a lot of times people don't believe in them. They don't wear them, so they don't recommend them. And what might not be right for you uh, may still be right for many of your patients. But the suggestion would be to try some of this stuff, wear it yourselves, get a feel on it, and experience it, and then you can relay real life experiences to the practice uh, to the patients as well. That's just kind of one aspect of training that you could do. Um, there are others that we could talk about in a little bit, but that's one of them is get to know your products uh, very well. And then this way you could sell them to your patients. All right, Nicole. Um, all right, Mike, thanks. Nicole, what are our results from our poll? So this time we had a, a clear winner. We have once a quarter is when most of our attendees are offering training for their teams. Great, that's awesome. Um, love to hear that you guys are offering training for your team because it is a great thing to do because it definitely will reflect in sales. Um, and just remember you want to take a look at some key, key metrics on where to improve and make a plan for 2019 on how to improve those. So Mike, what kind of resources of training would they be able to look into if they wanted to do that for next year to increase some of their key performance indicators? Lots of avenues out there for training. Uh, used to not be, but now there's lots of things you could do. Uh, one of them is uh, lunch and learns from your lab reps. So if you have a, a product you're selling and, you, and you're not well versed on it or it's a new product, uh, have the uh, the vendor rep or the lab rep come in, bring bagels or a pizza, and have a lunch and learn and understand the products. That's just one way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it would be to uh, take advantage of some of the meetings that are in your neck of the woods. Uh, a lot of times optometric and opticians associations have monthly meetings or quarterly meetings or annual conferences that are packed filled with uh, plenty of training opportunities. You uh, could consider sending one of your staff to a school, a formal education option, that's always a, a way to go. However, those are few and far between as far as schools goes, either whether they're certificate programs or, or degree programs, there's not that many around the country and they usually aren't within driving distance. So uh, it was one of the reasons why we created the Pinnacle program that we talked about in the beginning of the, of the, uh, of the webinar here was that these training opportunities do not exist and they're not, uh, sometimes they're not convenient. Uh, sometimes they're not very cost effective either. So we came up with something that solved those problems and uh, which is the Pinnacle program, which is basically a crash course of two days. We deal with frames and lenses uh, each day and it was derived from a college degree program, basically the first two semesters that somebody would take, cut it down into about two days. So uh, we found a need and we are filling it, but there are other avenues out there as well for training. And, uh, you know, there's no such thing as too much training when it comes to this. The, the more the merrier is the best way to go, I think. So, Mike, a um, couple of questions that have come in. So we'll start with this one. Um, so if I want to, if I train my staff, uh, but you know for them to achieve a certification does that mean I will have to pay them more because I have a concern about the expense that this will cost it is possible when any when any any time somebody moves up the ladder and, and gets certified or becomes you know a little bit more of an expert uh, salary should should uh, mirror that as well and yeah you might have to throw another dollar or two or three per hour on the table but what you're going to get back is more consistent sales less redos, uh, and even to the point where, and we've seen this happen numerous times, somebody becomes certified, less turnover. There's less app, uh, less uh, uh, pension for somebody to leave when they're certified because they've, be, they've made a career out of this choice of optics versus just kind of finding their, their way around life. Once you get certified, it means you're kind of in it for good. And generally speaking, not all the time, 
but it, it will reduce turnover. People will stay at your practice longer. So that training, the money that you're spending becomes an investment in your practice, just like a new, uh, a new piece of equipment. It's the same way to look at it. And then another question that has come in is how do patients typically respond to staff when they achieve certification or do patients see a difference? Absolutely. Um, in today's healthcare field, um, <clears throat> patients are seeing um, nurse practitioners and technicians all the time, and they're curious as if their health is going to be taken care of by somebody. So they're asking for certifications, and, and in, in the course of conversations, are you certified? Are you trained in this? And if the answer is yes, it alleviates any concerns that the patient has. So by flashing those credentials, it's a good thing. It, it makes the patient see that the practice is doing what it can to get people certified at the, at the highest level they possibly can. Um, and it means that that should extend into the patient care in their mind. So it's a, it's a good thing to have people on staff certified. That's why we hang our certificates on the wall. Not so we can look at them, but so the patient can see them and become less concerned as far as who's taking care of them and what they really know. <laughs> Great. I love that idea of putting the certificates on the wall. So a couple other questions that have come through um, in regards to the Pinnacle program. Um, when you say two days, is that specifically for ABO for beginners or um, what areas is that? It is for anybody who works in the practice. We have run this numerous times. The feedback that we got on it is awesome. And we've had doctors attend it. And, uh, and learn things they didn't learn in, in their school. We've had 20-year opticians attend it and realize that they've been checking uh, lenses uh, wrong the whole time. Not that it, that it created errors, but there's an efficient way to do it and there's an inefficient way to do it. So we teach textbook things that are much better tried and, uh, tried and true techniques versus what you learn on the street. That's why it was developed from a college program and the textbook way is always the best way to go because at this point, you're learning the way it should be done. Whether that person takes it and, and morphs it into something a little bit more uh, street smart later, that's fine. But they learn the right way from the start, not the wrong way. It's not just for ABO. Um, when we do this at a practice, we suggest that everybody comes. Everybody from the front desk, receptionist, insurance person, the doctors, the technicians, the uh, uh, even if they're certified, uh, ABO opticians, you never can get too much training. And if somebody walks out of this two-day program learning one thing, we consider that a success, no matter what their credentials are. That is true. And I, it is recommended to definitely do your whole staff and training because that way everyone is on the same page. Um, so another question that has come in is that I've heard such of a, of such a thing called a super tech um, where they're cross-trained. So who do you recommend to be cross-trained in the practices? It, that was one of the things that I did as a dispenser uh, religiously was I increased my value to the practice by being able to do everything from check-in to the dropping off the patient at the exam room door uh, and then picking them up on the way out and, and doing all the paperwork and, and you know glasses, contact lenses, you name it. Cross-training is key. You never know who's going to call out sick. You never know who's going to, uh, you know, need to leave for whatever reason. And then you become shorthanded. You lose a key person. It does impact the practice. So with the Pinnacle program, by having, or with any training, having all your staff in there is a great thing to have. This way, maybe somebody can move up to a position versus hiring from the outside. That's the first thing I noticed was that you can move in, move from within. The other thing is that, um, it reflects on their work ethics as well. You know, if everybody's on the same team, it creates a team building environment and everybody's kind of doing their very best versus doing their own thing. It works very well for, for it, and the patients see this. And with that comes better sales, more consistent sales. It just goes on and on and on. But it's absolutely worth it to train everybody. And one of the things that we noticed that we got feedback on was that when somebody's cross-trained to say do minor repairs like a, a screw replacement or a nose pad needs to be replaced. There's no sense interrupting the optician who's maybe working on a three or four pair sale to do a free job like that when maybe the technician who's not doing anything or the receptionist could handle that repair. 
So the patient gets taken care of, but yet there's no interruptions on the sales side. So as far as uh, cross-training goes, I'm a big believer in it. I've done it myself. Uh, I've learned those things myself to be cross-trained outside the optician scope, and it has come back uh, in, in multiple ways to reward the practice and myself as well. Great, Mike. Um, and to kind of expand on what you mentioned about having a tech do the screw, the other thing that you're doing when you do cross training and have a technician or even a front desk person replace that screw for that patient is that you are not making that patient wait for your optician, especially if you only have maybe one or two opticians and they are busy selling pair of glasses. Number one, like Mike said, you don't have to interrupt them. But also, you don't have to make that patient wait for the optician to be done. So it is a, a kind of helps on both sides of that, which I think is a great thing. So uh, Mike, another question that's come in is a lot of people kind of want to know about when they hire new people, because sometimes that can sometimes throw a wrench in things with training. So is there a certain dedicated training that you would recommend for a new hire for a new hiree? <laughs> New hires uh, depends on their their understanding from you know from the start. So if they're brand new, fresh in the field, and and you know need to kind of learn that lenses round and and start from there, uh, you could do that on the internet. We have training programs on our website. There are training programs uh, all over the web that'll give you some good insight on basic one on one level optical. Um, and then at that point, then you would maybe follow up with these quarterly type trainings or uh, bringing that person to a meeting. But absolutely, that's one of the things that we see a lot is that somebody gets hired and there's no time to train them. So they're catching their education from somebody who's got a spare five minutes or maybe a sit down in an exam room. If you could bring them to the water with the online training and they digest that, then the next step would be some form of a formalized training for that person as well. Because online only goes so far. A lot of what we do requires, uh, you know, uh, interaction between the student and the instructor, so to speak, being able to teach people how to use their hands. Some of that just can't be done on the Internet. So the Internet's a good place to start. Absolutely. It'll give you all kinds of info. But at one point, a formalized physical in-house or external training where there's people interacting with each other is the way to go to really solidify that training, absolutely. All right, great. So it doesn't look like we have any more questions coming in from our attendees. Um, so I'd like to, um, so Mike, any um, last comments or mentions that you'd like to talk about before we end today? Absolutely. Quantum Optical is a resource uh, for education, for training. Uh, there are others out there that, that we are aware of as well. So if you, any, of the, any of the attendees have any questions as far as this type of training that we offer or other types of training that we may not but that they're looking for, they could always contact us. Our goal is not to, uh, you know, uh, is to get everybody trained. So we can do it 99% of the time we can. But if we cannot, for whatever reason, there's resources out there. I'd be happy to share them with anybody that wants to hear them. All right. Thanks, Mike. Um, so actually, we just had a few more questions pop in. I appreciate the attendees doing that. So um, one of the questions uh, that we had and that I'll go ahead and answer is, um, does the worksheet include contact lens cells? Um, and it, right now it doesn't, but we can definitely add that to, that, to the worksheet before we send it out. Um, the other thing that was mentioned is about adding um, what the average 10% is for the national average. So we'll um, revise that as well to kind of send that out to you guys. Um, and the other question that I will go ahead and answer as well is um, how often should we review these key performance indicators in Edge Pro? Um, and Mike, of course, chime in if you have any other thoughts on this um, for your key performance indicators in edge pro or in your practice itself um, we recommend looking at i would say at least once a month on your key ones like ar transitions patient on frames uh, especially look at them maybe even more often if you're trying to track them and maybe um, either increase the percentages or decrease the percentages. Um, Mike, do you have anything else to add about what, how often to look at key performance indicators in the practice? 
once a month is pretty good. Um, there are some people that do it. They're a little OCD. They do it every hour on the hour, and that's a little too much. You need a little bit bigger picture, and once a month is great. But the other thing when it comes to that is that if you do notice something slipping, the time to do it is right then, not watch it for another month or two and see what's happening. If you have data and you have these metrics and you're looking at them and you see something kind of going south, address it immediately. So this way you don't lose business, patients, and things like that down the road. It could be something simple to solve. It could be something more complex, but to solve it, you must. Yes, that is absolutely correct. And then another question that came in, um, Mike, probably more on your end, is if you hold a training after hours, um, should you pay your staff during that training? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's an investment. I mean, it, you know, to get the staff in, uh, you know, trained and, and things like that, they get excited about that. But it's not free. It's still work. They're giving up their personal time at your practice. And ultimately, the practice is what's going to benefit. So paying your staff to attend these trainings is, is, is very common. It creates a level of loyalty from the, the staff member to the practice that this was an investment. Um, if they're doing something for free, you get out of it exactly what you pay for. So they may not be uh, very, uh, very into it during training day because they're not getting paid and they'll find reasons to not pay attention or go walk around or things like that. If they're getting paid, it's part of their job and it ties it directly into their practice and into their job description. I, I recommend it probably because it's not going to cost a whole lot of money to get those people trained. The benefits are going to outweigh what you write a check for for those couple of days there. Absolutely. All right. Awesome, Mike. Well, Mike, I would like to thank you for spending this time with us and sharing your expertise with our attendees. I would also like to thank um, all our attendees and appreciate you coming. Please wait around for just a few more minutes. Um, if you have any other questions, me, me and Nicole will stay on to answer them um, or get the answer from Mike and shoot them over to you. And Nicole does have a few more tidbits to let you know about. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much, Mike, for joining us today. So we really appreciate all the feedback that you could provide. Uh, we do have a five question survey. The link is in your chat window. Um, if, you know, if you have any questions or if you need more information about anything that we discussed in the webinar today, please feel free to contact customer care. The email is in the chat window, but it is customer care at gatewaypn.com. Also, uh, do not forget about part three of our five-part series, Expert Strategies to Maximize Your Profits with Vision Plans. That will be on November the 27th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The session will be moderated by Kathy Furman, and our speakers will include Patty Warren and Jay Binkowitz. So be sure to attend this excellent session. And